Trust God when he removes people from your life. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 to 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. There are times when people suddenly exit our lives, and we are left wondering why. It's crucial to recognize that not everyone we call family, friends, or loved ones has our best interests at heart. Not everyone you consider a friend is sent by God. Just as God places people in your life, the devil can do the same. Even within the church, some individuals may be placed by the devil to deceive you into thinking they are good people. The first murder recorded in the Bible was one brother killing another. Similarly, Joseph was betrayed and sold into slavery by his own brothers. These examples remind us that human nature can often be untrustworthy. Too often, people place their trust in other humans rather than in the Lord. I have witnessed many leave their church community because they were hurt by someone within the congregation. Unfortunately, such experiences can lead them to harbor resentment towards the church or even God due to the actions of a person. A piece of advice that will serve you well throughout your life. Do not blame God for the actions of people. To mature in your Christian faith, you must learn to differentiate between people and God. Often, people mistakenly blame God for the misdeeds of others. Just because someone attends church does not mean they are walking in the Spirit. They could be regular attendees, yet still live according to the flesh. And what does the Bible say about the works of the flesh? Understanding this distinction is essential for spiritual growth and maintaining a resilient faith in the face of human failings. Continuing with this important theme, it's critical to understand that attending church doesn't necessarily equate to living a life that is pleasing to God. Many people attend church regularly, participate in services, and may even hold leadership positions, yet their lives outside of these settings may not reflect the teachings of Christ. The Bible is clear about the nature of the works of the flesh, listing behaviors such as enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, and things like these as outlined in Galatians 5.19.21. These actions are in direct contradiction to the fruit of the Spirit, which includes love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. As believers, it is vital to discern not just the actions, but also the motivations of those we interact with, including ourselves. This discernment is not about judgment, but about protection and wise navigation through our interpersonal relationships. It serves as a reminder to anchor our trust in God rather than placing it in fallible humans. While we are called to love and forgive others, we must also be prudent and not naive about the realities of human behavior. This awareness also guides us in our personal spiritual journey. It compels us to ask introspective questions about our own walk with God. Are we merely going through the motions at church, or are we genuinely striving to live out the teachings of Jesus? This reflection is crucial because it aligns our actions with our faith, ensuring that we are not merely hearers of the word, but doers as well. Moreover, the understanding that some may come into our lives with less than honorable intentions, whether they are aware of it or not, helps us rely more deeply on the Holy Spirit for guidance. The Holy Spirit aids us in developing discernment, enhancing our ability to see beyond the superficial. This spiritual discernment is what will allow us to establish healthy, godly relationships that encourage mutual growth and accountability in our faith. Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 to 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Those mentioned are indeed works of the flesh, hatred, selfish ambitions, envy, murders, and revelries. It's entirely possible for someone to attend church every day of the week and yet still be fully immersed in a life driven by the flesh. Similarly, they might struggle with consistently living in accordance with the Spirit. As a Christian for many decades, I can honestly say that there are times when I have not walked perfectly in the Spirit. 
Even as a born-again believer, I have made mistakes and hurt people. I share these reflections to emphasize a crucial point. Put your trust in God. Do not place your faith in people. Trust in God and God alone. Even when God removes people from your life, trust his wisdom. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Who should you trust? Trust God, for he knows all. The Bible teaches us that his ways and thoughts are beyond our comprehension. As stated in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 25, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. God's wisdom surpasses everything we know. He sees the beginning and the end and he was the sole architect when he created the heavens and the earth. No human was present. God's methods are vastly different from ours. Consider Job, who questioned why God allowed him to suffer. God's response in Job chapter 38 verse 4 was pointed, Where wast thou when I laid the earth's foundations? Declare, if thou hast understanding. We were not present when God laid the foundations of the earth. This underscores why we must trust God especially when he removes certain people from our lives. Often such removals are protective measures, though they may be painful. Losing a friendship can be deeply painful, and it may be disheartening to no longer call someone your friend. However, it is better to lose a friendship than to lose your way or your life. Do not, for the sake of friendship, follow a destructive path. The notion of ride or die should not lead to actual demise. Countless lives have been negatively impacted by detrimental friendships. There are brilliant minds that have ended tragically because of the company they kept. Some who were meant to serve God are now serving the devil because they encountered the wrong people. There are individuals who have entered into marriages with the wrong partners, resulting in loss and suffering. Consider how many people have ended up in prison due to associations with those they love. This is why trusting God rather than placing undue trust in human relationships, is vital. God sees beyond what we can and makes decisions for our ultimate good. Trusting in Him can safeguard us from making irreversible mistakes due to misplaced loyalty or affection. Before you were born, He knew you, and He knew the journey you will take in this life. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5 Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Perhaps you don't understand the love God has for you. Your life is important to God. David lamented in Psalm chapter 55 verses 12 to 14 that, For it was not an enemy that reproached me, then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me, then I would have hid myself from him. But it was thou a man mine equal, my guide, and mine acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of God in company. David's own trusted friend turned against him, seeking to take his life. Sometimes God may remove people from our lives, not just for our protection, but also because we might be hindering their spiritual journey. Perhaps your presence in their life prevents them from fulfilling their potential or serving God effectively. It's crucial not to become a barrier to someone else's blessings, or your own. Instead, allow God to work in and through all situations, and keep your focus on Jesus Christ. Consider the story of Samson, who encountered the wrong person and ignored wise counsel about intermarriage. He disregarded the warnings, and his story ended in tragedy. The company we keep significantly influences our life's trajectory. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 to 6 advises, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Do you desire God to direct your path, or would you rather forge your own way? Are you inclined to blame God for your hardships, or do you wish to let him work through your life? The choice is yours. When we discuss building a life on Christ, we are talking about relying entirely on him. Your life's stability, like that of any structure, depends on its foundation. Jesus illustrated this with the parable of two builders. One built his house on sand, and when the storms hit, it was destroyed. The other built on rock, and his house endured the storm. The foundation you choose is critical. A life built on fleeting desires 
covetousness, or other sinful behaviors cannot lead to a fruitful ending. Building your life on shallow, unstable foundations like sin or material desires will not sustain you through life's challenges. Similarly, consider marriages built solely on physical attraction or material wealth. These relationships often falter as external conditions change, beauty fades, financial situations can shift dramatically. Life is unpredictable, and if a marriage is grounded only in transient aspects like wealth or physical appearance, it may struggle to withstand the inevitable changes of life. Therefore, build your life and relationships on something more substantial and lasting. Ground your life in Christ and His teachings, allowing His wisdom and strength to guide and sustain you through every challenge and change. This solid foundation will not only support you, but also enable you to grow and flourish in all aspects of life, anchored firmly against the storms that may come. People are building their lives on the wrong foundations. Who have you built your life upon? We must not deceive ourselves. It's crucial to confront the truth about this. What is the foundation of your life? Are you building your life on money, allowing it to be your sense of security, or even your God? Are you building your life on sexual immorality, adultery, or prayerlessness? What are the things holding up your life? Now is the time to reflect on the kind of life you want to lead and what you want to be the foundation. The man who built his house on the rock can be considered fortunate because when the storm came, his house remained standing. This man built his house on the rock, Jesus. He was wise to build on Jesus, unlike the fool who built on something transient that would not last. Now is the time for you to start building your life on Jesus, using the right materials and principles. This message is from God to every Christian and to anyone who desires a steadfast life, a life that will remain firm and not crumble, a life that will be secure in Christ. Build on Jesus. To be clear, there is a somber truth that God will convey to those who do not build on Christ they will be turned away from Him on Judgment Day. By not building on Christ, you are effectively saying, you don't need Him in any way. You are rejecting Christ. Failing to build on Christ means you have not committed your life to Him, and consequently, such individuals will also face rejection. This is a pivotal moment to assess and decide the foundation upon which you are building your life. Are you prepared to make Christ your cornerstone, ensuring your life is anchored in something eternal and unshakable?